In this video, we will talk about the composition of the tangent function and its inverse, and this will include the inverse or the cancellation properties and examples. In the two of the previous videos, we talked about the composition of sine and cosine functions, and you can go back and watch them, and now we will talk about tangent. Again, let's start with the composition of two inverse functions, f of x and f inverse of x. From the definition of inverse functions, the composition of f and f inverse of x equals x, and the composition of f inverse and f of x is also x. Each of these statements come with a condition, and in the first one, x has to be in the domain of f inverse of x, and in the second one, x has to be in the domain of f of x. So, in other words, these expressions equal x, as long as x is a number that we can use inside the parentheses. Now, let's talk about the tangent function and its inverse. The domain of the basic tangent function represents all real numbers except odd multiples of pi over 2. However, if we want to talk about the composition of the tangent function and its inverse, then we need the restricted tangent function. For this restricted function, the domain is the interval between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, and the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. To the right, we have the inverse tangent function, and as you see, the domain and the range are interchanged. And now we can use the restricted tangent function and the inverse tangent function to form the inverse or the cancellation properties. The first one is tangent of inverse tangent of x equals x for each x in the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the second one is inverse tangent of tangent of x equals x for each x in the interval between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So in the first property, x can be any number, but in the second property, x has to be a number between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Now let's see how we can apply these properties to simplify expressions. Here we have three examples, and the first one is tangent of inverse tangent of 27. This expression starts with tangent and has inverse tangent inside the parentheses. Therefore, we will apply the first property. And first, we have to check if number 27 is on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. And yes, 27 is on this interval, and according to this property, whatever number we have here, the same will be the result. So then, we can say that tangent of inverse tangent of 27 is 27. In the second example, we have inverse tangent of tangent of pi over 3. Because this expression starts with inverse tangent and it has tangent in parentheses, then we will use the second property. Pi over 3 is on the interval between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, Therefore, the result here will be pi over 3. And now, in the last example, we have inverse tangent of tangent of 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 is not on the interval between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, because 5 pi over 4 is greater than pi over 2. Therefore, we cannot use this property. In other words, the result will not be 5 pi over 4. We can still evaluate this expression if we first evaluate the expression inside the parentheses. And for this, let's use the unit circle. So here we have the unit circle and the angle of 5 pi over 4. And tangent of 5 pi over 4 is 1 because by definition to find tangent we need to divide y by x. And negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2 makes 1. So now we will have inverse tangent of 1. And now because the range of the inverse tangent function is any value between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, then we have to ask what angle exists on this interval between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 
whose tangent is 1. That angle will be pi over 4, because at pi over 4, if we divide y by x, we will get 1. Then the answer will be pi over 4. So now we have all the examples solved and thank you for watching.